Welcome to this edition of Inside the Academy Studio. Today's conversation will be about Ben Affleck's Argo. Argo is uh, adapted to screen by Chris Terrio from the book by Tony Mendez uh, called The Master of Disguise and the article Escape from Tehran uh, by Behrman. Um, the movie uh, represents basically the life of Tony Menendez, but specifically the dramatized, dramatized extraction of six American diplomats by Tony Menendez, uh, who's played by Ben Affleck, uh, from the Canadian Embassy in Iran, and the lengths and the troubles they have to go through um, to recover them, one of them being creating and putting into production, almost putting into production, a fake Hollywood film called Argo. Mm -hmm. So I bring in my co-host, yes. um, and uh, right away, when, when you have Ben Affleck associated with the film, in this case, directing the film and producing the film, we have to talk about his progression as a director. This is his third, uh, third feature, uh, Gone Baby Gone, The Town, and now Argo. Can you talk about how Affleck has matured as a director in your eyes? Uh, yeah, I think this is a, his first movie that's outside of outside of the crime genre, you say, the Boston crime genre, and into like the famous and, Boston native Affleck. Yeah, there he yeah, yeah. most definitely a famous Boston native. Yeah. Seen a lot of Red Sox games. Um, yeah, now he's into the suspense thriller, that spy thriller. Yeah, this is truly a spy thriller. That's uh, based on a true story. That's the simplest way to put it. Right, this is the first time he's actually done a sort of biographical picture, even though it's loosely based, but mm -hmm. it's still not the, maybe the shoot 'em up But Gone Baby Gone was more of a, it was a character study. Yeah, and, and you, you say the town is too. You yeah. Know it. But uh, you could say the He's not an action film director. But yeah, it, but it's in the, you would say it's in the prime genre. Would right. you say so? Yeah, yeah. yeah I would agree. I would okay. agree. Uh -huh. Uh, like we've been talking about, um, controversy has surrounded many of these mm -hmm. films this year that the Academy has recognized. In one particular country. Well, okay, <laughs> possibly. In this, yeah. in this case, there has been criticism by Canadian, uh, Canadian nationals that were involved with the extraction, and even British and New Zealand uh, oh, yeah. um, that's true, that's true. residents who thought their role was, uh, you know, flossed over. Um... Does a film that is clearly trying to say that it's fictionalized have any responsibility in acknowledging these factions and their disappointment? I think it does because, like movies and like a for lack of a better term, Hollywood, just like just like the Hollywood you see in this movie, is responsible for bringing information and culture to the masses, right? So, but it's it's not. Its job is not to force feed us. Yeah, exactly. if, it, if it kind of starts the conversation, it's up to the viewer uh, to find out what the fact was, right? And if yeah. you know, you have to sort of certain take some liberties. So I kind of disagree. I think. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you too. Yeah, that, and but uh, I'm saying that. What I'm saying is that you have to make. But they have to acknowledge it after the yeah, fact. They have yeah, to acknowledge yeah. that. Yes, we did. We didn't. And keep it with a reason. When you're when you're dealing with a story based on based on a true story, as long as you keep the, as long as the characters are reacting just like they would in a, in a as it was in real life, then you could still say it's a faithful adaptation, even if details have been changed. I mean, that's yeah. an, that's a, yeah. Of course, details are going to be changed, but you have to keep the spirit of the story true. I mean, right. I think the criticism. So does Argo keep the uh, spirit of the story true? Uh, to a point, I, I mean, obviously, yeah, I wasn't even born then, but I don't even think that's relevant. But I think to a point, it does. But I think where it doesn't is, I don't think it do recognizes the Canadian uh, sacrifice that was that was made. I, I mean, I don't think it recognizes, but maybe that's just the limit of the two-hour window. That yeah, had. I guess the just the sheer scope of the plan, how detailed it had to be, right? It, yeah. It's a difficult thing. The, yeah. Iran is. The Shah has fallen. The Ayatollah, Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khamenei yeah. is in charge, and these people really have disdain towards any Western ideology. So there was much, much, much more layered plan to get these people up, but obviously with two hours, things are yeah. glossed over, and maybe this was glossed over. I think, and also I think the reason it was glossed over is to, 
is so that you can have the, the characters of this movie. The, right. all, the characters played by John Goodman and Alan Arkin. Yeah, they, they bring it. They bring a different size of this movie. I think that's the reason this movie. I think that's where connected I, with audiences. I think that's where I want to go next. Yeah. Uh, John Goodman plays a makeup artist who uh, gets Alan Arkin, who plays Lester Siegel, a producer, to you know join uh, Tony Mendez's plan uh, of making this fake movie. And I agree with you. They are really the the two characters that get people moving. If, if you're a viewer to this film, you're going to instantly connect with them. They're yeah. kind of they're both the humor and the almost, uh, you know, the kick in the butt this film needs from, uh, I'm going to admit, it's pretty gloomy Tony Mendez played by Ben Affleck. He's having yeah. troubles with his marriage, with, with his, marriage yeah. his kid, uh, even seeing them, right? They're like the catapult that kind of launches yeah. this movie. I mean, I guess the, you see the reason why it's there is because to make it dif- differentiate from other Spy that was based on true story. I mean, last year we saw the movie Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Right, based was, in the British uh, yeah. and not necessarily intelligence based, services. Yeah, not necessarily based on a true story, but it's very... You see when it's, it's, it's filled with only spies and intelligence characters, characters in the intelligence agency. So you got a very different movie than you did with Argo, right? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. There, it's almost like the world of a spy or an intelligence officer is so mundane that, you know, Hollywood can lose her tune, sex, anything up, jazz anything up, and they obviously do that to this film. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to the CIA, this has been a year of, you know, the CIA getting appreciation, but some people have also pointed that this film, if it's taken any, you know, in any grain seriousness or seriously um, is a redemption of Jimmy Carter and the CIA at this time. You know, these these two forces were really a lot of mudslinging at that time, a lot of blame that they weren't doing anything. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously, due to privacy, you couldn't release the fact that they had got these six individuals out. Yeah. You know, possibly if this was out, maybe Jimmy Carter would still have been president in 1981. So... Uh, is it, well, is it a story? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Obviously ignoring Ronald Reagan and the <laughs> the the aura around him. But yeah. in any way, is this film positively portray the clandestine services and the Jimmy Carter administration? Uh, yeah, I think it does. I mean, I think it shows that this is a CIA, this, the CIA you see in Argo. The CIA that is thoughtful, resourceful, and they're not. They don't take chances. If anything, this is a CIA that's criticized for inaction rather than its actions. Right. So that's just so very. Different. And that's positive to you. So being yeah. risk averse is positive. I right. mean, I'm not saying it's a positive. I'm, I'm saying that you have to take action as an intelligence agency. But it's the common thing you see. This criticism you see in modern uh, TV and film about CIA is that they do too much action and they take too much control. Right. Right. This is a CIA that is trying. That is very like methodical very risk averse like you said much more tempered in their response yeah right correct uh, I, I can agree with that um now we, we talked about Affleck as director um as an actor in this film he is the the father of a child um an officer and an intelligence officer who has you know such invested in this extraction that he basically tells those people, those diplomats, that you ha- you think you're the only one with your life at stake. If I don't make it, if I'm caught, I'm dead too. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that emotion in that scene is built by the fact that we have seen the rift and the distance that he feels with his own son. Mm-hmm. So just talk about those moments where he's really trying to get these diplomats, get these people who are saying, what, this is the best plan you have? convincing them. How effective is Tony Mendez in convincing those Americans that I'm the best shot you have? Well, like you already mentioned, I mean, showing that he's a person too and not just a G-man really, yeah. really gets them to trust him. I mean, I mean that's, a, that's a key thing about when you're using when you're using a human intelligence agent, you have to make sure that they're relatable. They're, yeah. yeah. And that they're, they're not just they're not just a person with a license to kill. Right, right. So, yeah. you know, he's not the James Bond. He's yeah. the uh, shaggy beard, uh, brown suit, 
person who could be getting groceries beside you, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's an everyman intelligence officer. And I think that's what Affleck tries to do in that scene, you know, show that struggle that it's a personal struggle or not a, just a professional decision on his part. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, lot of indiv- a lot of people, according, including the Academy, have honored the editing of Argo this year, mm-hmm. um, strictly of keeping the movie crisp, moving, you know, increasing tension, not not having too many lulls in action, a movie mm-hmm. that keeps moving. And a large part of that is the film editor, who is William Goldenberg, and mm-hmm. who is recognized by the Academy this year. Any comments on the uh, the editing of uh, of Argo? Well, it's I always find it tough to comment on editing because good editing should not be is something that you don't necessarily take notice on your right. on your first yeah. viewing, right? Yeah, I mean, it's basically yeah an assist of the director, right? Yeah. It should be seamless, and in, in many ways, it was seamless. Yeah. Well. Right. I guess the way you can do editing is if it if you get wrapped into that movie yeah. in however long it is, and I think that that's what happens in Argo. Right. Okay. Uh, we are now nearing the end of this edition of uh, Inside the Academy Studio, and like always, we like to end with questions. Mm-hmm. So I ask, what was your favorite moment in Argo? I think my favorite moment would have to be near the beginning. It's where you see the in the CIA office. It, it may be a fabricated scene, but I think it helps with it helps set the tone for the rest of the movie, where you see the Ayatoya, sorry for if, not, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, with the darts on him. I mean, and then the Iranian uh, citizen who's uh, taking over the offices sees that, and he's just enraged by that. And then he just goes. Uh, then he just goes after everything. I mean, it shows that there's. It gives a reason that these are. That it's not just it these minus, or, minus Iranians taking over and taking these hostages. They feel like they have a purpose. They feel like they have a reason, and this. Yeah. Is, so they're not the faceless bad guys. They're, yeah, they have some sort of sort of motivation. Yeah, I mean. Uh, this, yeah. The United States government did do wrong here. I mean, yeah. now this, I'm not trying to be political here, but they did do wrong here, and the Iranians are very angry at them, and they feel like this is the way... I'm not saying they're right either. This is the way okay. that they can make up for that. So, okay, all right. Yeah, and my, my, not favorite, the Catholic my favorite moment in Argo, uh, once again, I think both of us would agree, when, when Goodman and Arkin came in the film, mm-hmm. the film spirits lifted, and mine was uh, the, the fake party they threw at the, the Beverly Hilton for mm-hmm. Argo. Just announcing the movie, and it was a lot of funny things. Arkin talking to a fan, saying, Is this going to be in the movie? And he's like, Oh, I think you should check it out. It's just a really fun sequence, you know, showing the fakeness of Hollywood at times, you know. <laughs> it, it, it was a great scene, I thought. Uh, least favorite moment, and I think I'll, I, I'll start. My least favorite moment was near the end of the film. Mm. Um, the Americans and Affleck are on the plane. There's a mysterious phone call that says they're, 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 they, they're Americans have escaped, that we know that they're on the plane, the documents they showed you were fake, and then there's just my, my really wild chase by the Iranians at the airport, mm-hmm. officials, that leads into a basically a tarmac chase. Yeah. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it's a ridiculous scene, yeah. not needed, really. You could have yeah. captured it just by showing the plane taking off. Yeah. And I think it's something that the director and the writers are going to regret if they yeah. revisit the film. I think it was, the reason it was written in is to show just like how the characters felt on the plane. Like they were, it wasn't just relaxing being on that plane. That's kind of how they felt that they were being chased. I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't really work in such a hyper realistic movie. I'll agree with that, but it just right. gives a sense of the danger that they still face. They, they only only relaxed once the. The stewardess says, You're, we are now out of Iranian air. Yes, and here's alcohol. And here's alcohol. <laughs> yeah. uh, your least favorite moment? I think my least favorite would be how and how they just glossed over the part where they, the six hostages are taken out of the embassy and to the ambassador, uh, the ambassador, Canadian ambassador's home, I think. Ken Taylor. Uh, Canadian I, yeah, ambassador. I think the, Ken Taylor, yes. Yes. I should know that. Uh, that, he should, that. I think it should have been done. Uh, it should have, could have had a good amount of attention to the film, and I just felt like it was a scene that could have been done and could have showed, could have been a way to show Canadians' uh, commitment to this project. And like we mentioned before, how we, the Canadian contingent has been downplayed. So this is definitely that was a place where you think it could have been added. Yeah. And okay. the New Zealand and English. Yeah. Yeah. One of the last things we like to do was word association. So when you think Ar- Argo, what word do you think of? I think of Star Wars. 
That's two words, but you know that, that's that's kind of the movie they're looking for. Star Wars, and that's that's what the Argo movie is. <laughs> and I think of Warren Beatty, and that's uh, <laughs> based on a scene yeah. of Alan Arkin's character saying that he knows Warren Beatty. Yeah. So when we think of Argo, we think of Star Wars and Warren Beatty. Yeah, nineteen seventies. That is this edition of Inside the Academy Studio. Thank you.